Mm -mm. What's up everyone and welcome on back to the channel. Thank you as always for being here. We're moving on into the next track on Overnight Sensation, which is going to be I'm I'm the Slime. Remember when slime was this really big thing, especially like on YouTube and everyone was doing it? My niece was one of those kids that was like always making slime and playing with it and stuff. I never I never quite understood the the whole slime fascination but i'm also not not against it if you want to slime be sliming let's go ahead and listen to it we'll talk about it after frank zappa here we go <laughs> Do be sliming. Nice drums. I am gross and perverted. Oh. I mean, don't let me stop you if you want to be sliming. I, I, all right, I'm really curious. Remember my first reaction to Frank Zappa, period, was listening to Montana, which is on this album, if I remember correctly. I think I saw it on here. Yeah, it has Montana on it at the end of the album. So that was the first song I had heard from Frank Zappa. And I wasn't quite ready for it yet, you know? Like, if I remember correctly, I think I probably said something along the lines of, like, I think the music is kind of cool. Uh, it has this little silly factor that probably doesn't mix with me or whatever, but, you know, I can understand it in that respect, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, I broke through that eventual shell, and here we are. Um, <laughs> how do you guys feel about his vocal style here? I want to know from you, like, do you like his vocal style here? Or are you kind of like, eh, 
take it or leave it. Now that I'm used to Frank Zappa, and now that I'm much more, not a lot more, but a little bit more experienced in listening to his music, I love his style. I like the seemingly complete randomness of I Am The Slime, the title. I like how when I'm looking at the lyrics and how he's describing it, and when he reveals what the slime is basically, it kind of makes sense a little bit adding some context and some value and some meaning into the music. And then, of course, the music itself is fun to listen to while still remaining rocking, rolling, technically serious, some great guitar playing, wonderful drumming, interesting production at several parts, uh, especially how forefront his voice is compared to everything else. Like the music is actually like it sounds like it's less in volume and his vocals are much more pushed up, pushed in and up close and personal with us, which I think is a great production choice and a, a great choice to make this feel, in a sense, kind of slimy, just how, how in he is. Let's look at the lyrics on here, huh? I am gross and perverted. I'm obsessed and deranged. I have existed for years, but very little has changed. I'm the tool of the government and the industry, too, for I am destined to rule and regulate you. So already we're getting this presented in a sort of rhyme, a sort of, uh, not a limerick, but like, a rhyme or a, a riddle, I should say. That's the word I'm looking for. I may be vile and pernicious, but you can't look away. I make you think I'm delicious with the stuff that I say. I'm the best you can get. Have you guessed me yet? I'm the slime oozing out from your TV set. So the slime oozing out from your TV set, the things that you listen to, the things that you watch, he is that slime. That's what he embodies. That's why he says in the beginning, you know, I'm gross and perverted. I'm obsessed and deranged. I've existed for years. The little has changed. Tool of government and industry too. Like, now that you have the context of what he's talking about, you can get it. He's talking about media in general. Entertainment, news, ev like everything that comes out. You will obey me while I lead you and eat the garbage that I feed you. Until the day that we don't need you, don't go for help. No one will heed you. Your mind is totally controlled. It has been stuffed into my mold, and you will do as you are told until the rights to you are sold. I like that. You can't even make your own decisions until we sell you the rights to those decisions and approve those. I am the slime from your video oozing along your living room floor. I'm the slime from your video. Can't stop the slime, people. Look at me go. Let's look at the Wikipedia page for this one. So there's a single version and a different mix on the album version. We listened, as far as I know, to the album version. Uh, let's see. So, da, 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 da. second part discusses the evils of the answer to the riddle, the various things seen on television. Uh, you do have Ike and Tina Turner on the background here, just like we heard them on Montana uh, as well. According to Zappa, Ike Turner insisted he pay them no more than $25 per song. However, an invoice shows that they were actually paid $25 per hour and a grand total of $187.50 each for seven and a half hours of service. There you go, Zappa, paying them right. Zappa recalled that after hearing one of the recordings in the studio, Ike Turner exclaimed, what is this? <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. And later insisted that Tina and the Ikeettes not be credited on the album. He said, I don't want them associated with uh, whatever this is. I don't know what to call this. Oops, wrong one. I forgot. I'm going to go back here. I, I don't know what to call this, but it ain't, it ain't, don't put their names anywhere on this or my name for a matter of fact. Anyways. Let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below. You can follow me over on Twitter, support the channel, and Patreon. Thank you, as always, for being here. Please come back tomorrow, and I'll talk to you all later, guys. Bye.